and welcome to Hopalong Studio. So in today's video, I want to show you how to use these Pam Pastel Artist Pastels to create a really nice art journaling page. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate if you do so. You can hit the little subscribe button and maybe the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. So let's get started on today's project. So let's start with what is a pan pastel? Pan pastels are basically pigment in a pastel binder. These ones have more of a chalk-like feel to them, even though I don't believe there's actually chalk on the binder. I haven't been able to confirm that or not, but that's what you should maybe compare it to. It does not have a wax pastel finish. It is a lot more smoother and chalkier in feel. What's nice about these pan pastels is they're not very dusty when you apply them. You can cover big areas more than you would be able to do with a pencil pastel and the they are very highly pigmented. So to actually apply these pastels you have a range of these soft tools. Uh, basically you have them in these sponge shapes of several sizes. You also have these little covers that go onto a holder like that that can be removed and replaced. And they come in these round sizes as well as these square sizes. So there's a few different options when you're using these. I actually use the soft branded tools. What I've noticed is that even though you're using a sponge, this sponge is hard enough. It, it's really great to use for blending, but what's also nice about it is it doesn't seem to absorb a lot of the pastel. And that's something to think about when you are finding a tool. So you could probably use any sort of sponge, but finding a sponge that will not uh, leave little pieces of the sponge on your surface as well as not uh, absorb too much of the pigment is something to consider when you're looking for an art tool. To start with, I'm just going to show you how you can basically blend some of the pastel onto your surface. So you basically run very gently across the surface of your of your pan pastel, your sponge. And what you'll notice is there's just a little bit on top there. You'll also notice that in the pan itself, it hasn't made a bunch of crumblies. It's actually very dust, a uh, very low dust type of pastel. And so I'm going to very gently rub this into my watercolor paper. And this watercolor paper has more of a rough surface and so that's why you're seeing the variation. I know you could do something like this and bring in a lot of color but I'm, I'm not trying to have necessarily such a strong color all the time. My intention with this one was to slowly add in a little bit of color at a time because I, I do want to have this to be a slightly softer background to start with. And that's the beauty of a pan pastels is from what I know of, there isn't any other form of pan pastel that is easy to blend and spread like this. And you can see that it doesn't take much to put a layer onto your surface. And so in a sense, in that way, it kind of acts like paint. By the nature of it, it's actually fairly soft looking. So if you're not comfortable using watercolor paint, if but you are wanting to explore other art mediums or ways to uh, have different art mediums in your mixed media, this is not a bad medium to use because of just how soft it is and how well it applies. And when I was doing a test demo of this, I was using different watercolor paper. This one seems to pill a bit more than the watercolor paper in my other book. So something to think about. Uh, I think a smoother surface will definitely take this better, like pastel paper or a smoother cold press watercolor paper. So you can see I, I don't have necessarily a, a perfectly s smooth blend but that wasn't really the point for me. So I'm going to move on to my next color which is uh, I had started with turquoise and I'm going to move on to turquoise shade. And I'm trying to leave the top a little bit lighter and I'm just going to add some darker colors a little bit further down. I'm trying to create a scene that looks like sky and garden. So because of that, I am not adding a lot of dark color up here. I do want to keep it fairly light. You can see that I actually made a bunch of dust. So you shouldn't be doing a circular motion when you're doing the pan pastels. You should be pulling gently through so you don't do what I just did. But again, it, it, sometimes it's it's getting out of your habits. I paint a lot, so I, didn't, I tend to mix a bit in a circular motion when I am pulling color up from a palette. I'm going to add some aquamarine just along the bottom and along the sides of it. And again, you don't have to add a lot for it to, to add a little bit of 
texture and interest. I would I would say with the pan pastels, usually when I paint, I start with mid-tones and then I add my highlights and my darker spots. In the case of the pan pastels, I would say start lighter, go darker. Uh, it's much easier to add dark, uh, add layers of color and deepen the color. I, th I think it's actually quite hard, or at least I found it quite hard to go the other way. So there we go. So that's kind of the first layer of creating a sky. Now I'm going to be adding in some additional color to be able to make this look like a very soft garden look. So I'm, I'm trying to emulate foliage, but kind of foliage from a distance. So I'm, if you do photography, you see those those pictures that the background's blurred out and it's very soft. That's kind of what I'm trying to do here. I like the idea that, oh look, there's greenery in the background, but it isn't, it isn't in focus. It isn't bright. It doesn't take away from what else is going on. So bringing in the idea of leaves. And so that's getting pretty dark. So the next thing I'm going to do actually is uh, add in a little bit of a lighter lighter green. And because I do clean these things, they actually, as much as they look dirty, they actually aren't dirty. So I'm going to add in some of this, this very light green. This is going to add in a little bit more variation in color. So it's not all dark, but you can see that with this sponge, I am getting a lot more uh, stronger lines. So I want to go a little bit softer. So I'm going to go back to the other sponge. I found that was a little bit lighter than what I wanted in some of these areas. So we're just going to continue to mix in. And again, you can see they kind of blend together. So you end up with some really interesting looks as you kind of go along. So I think I'm pretty happy with that right now. And before we move on to the next step, one thing I would like to talk about is workable fixative. So for the longest time, I never used workable fixatives or sprays or anything on my artwork. I was uncomfortable with the idea of using them. I didn't know how they worked and I was worried about ruining my art. One thing I've realized with Pam Pastels is that if you want to add a bunch of color and then maybe you're finding that your colors are blending too much together that you can't get separation from it, use workable fixative. What workable fixative does is basically it uh, prevents a smudging. It basically it temporarily seals in the color. It's a very light sealant. It's not like using a varnish. A varnish will basically seal it in. You can't add anything on top. Basically when you're adding varnish, that's your last step. In this case, what a workable fixative does is it adds a layer of sealant so that this allows you to add other color on top. It, it creates a surface that you're able to still continue to work on your project. And so in this case, we're not done at at all with this project. At this point, what I'm going to do is add some workable fixative just so that we can spray this and be able to add additional layers on top. So one thing to be aware of is that once you add workable fixative, you will notice the color may change slightly. And so it's really important that you are aware that you are going to maybe get a little bit of color shift in this. And as you work with workable fixative, you'll be able to adjust your work so that you are getting the results that you want. It takes a little bit of tweaking and a little bit of work to get there in the end, but I believe that workable fixative is a way to really add interest to your art, add different layers, and as a mixed media artist, I'm always adding layers that shouldn't work together. So I'm going to spray this and I will come back and we will work on the next step. So now that this has been sprayed and is dry, I'm going to add my focal image with some modeling paste. This is Liquitex modeling paste. You can really use anything that you have. If you don't have modeling paste, you can just use some sort of paste, not a gel, just a paste because paste will take the pan pastels quite well. And so I have fiber paste. I have uh, different types of paste, molding paste and modeling paste. And there's a lot of different things that you can use for this. So in this case, I want to think about how I want to have my sunflowers. I love this particular sunflower. So what I'm going to do 
is for the first one, I'm gonna put it up against the edge. This one's gonna be a difficult one to do. If you're not comfortable with using paste, I would say just stick to the flat areas for this stuff. But in my case, I don't mind trying to see where I can kind of go with it. So this is gonna be a bit of a challenge to get it to stick nicely along those edges. I'm gonna to have to squish it a bit more. And again, if this is not something you're comfortable doing, just put it on a flat area and just move your paste through. The nice thing about modeling paste is it, it seems like it uh, takes paint and pastels and other mediums really quite well. It has enough what they would call tooth to be able to add paint and other texture on top of it. And that's an issue sometimes with gels. Is gels are great, but gels are quite smooth. So it can be sometimes a bit challenging to get the result that you're looking for. Gels have their place. It's just not necessarily in a project like this. When you're trying to add pastels on top of it, the modeling paste works really, really well. I try to be fairly smooth. I'm not going to have it perfect. So something to think about when you're working. And so yeah, it's a little bit messy in the corner there. I may clean that up before I sign off on this video. But I'm going to show another small section in here. And this is where it can get interesting if you want more than one image. You have a few choices. You can either let them dry in between, but because I'm impatient, and that's not usually my workflow, I will generally try to very carefully overlap these. The key with overlapping is making sure that you, that you very carefully overlap so you don't ruin your other images. And as long as I don't press it down too hard on the spots where I already have paste, I should be able to get away with adding some additional paste to this to this area. And this, this paste is fairly thick. If you're finding the modeling paste is a little heavy, you can also get a, a lighter molding on modeling paste. There are a lot of different textures depending on what you're looking to do with it and there's lots of things out there to try. So I think it's figuring out the medium that works for you. I buy mine in large containers just because I do do a lot of this type of work. If you are only thinking of dabbling in this or you think you may not use very much of it, I would suggest checking out some of the Ranger products uh, that for mediums because they, they have amount, very small amounts of it, which is great if you are only doing this every once in a while. If you plan to actually do quite a few projects like this, I would say get the bigger uh, tubs of it from either Liquitex or, or Golden or one of the other brands because you will end up with more medium for your money. And you can see where I kind of, by overlapping it, you have that bit of a line. So. I overlapped more than I ever have before, so I'm not surprised that I'm, I'm running into a little bit of issues. But this is also where you can take the edge of your knife very carefully and smooth and fill things in a little bit. And I have a little bit of overlap in here, which isn't super great, but I don't mind it because by the time we add the pastels, you're not even really going to notice that things are not perfect. The whole point of this project was to be something a tiny bit looser, a little bit easier to manage. And then this corner here, I'm actually going to clean up this a little bit. The reason being is you want to be able to have your book closed properly. And if I was being smarter about this when I was originally doing this, I would not put so much heavy paste right along the edge. And again, this takes a little bit of practice. I've done quite a bit of large palette paintings, so I have a fair amount of control. It takes a little while to get control with your with your knife. It it's a lovely skill. I actually find palette painting super relaxing. So it's a imp great and precious way to paint, and it it forces a lot of of imperfection because you can't really over control the medium.
because in this corner there was a little bit of a leaf. I'm going to try to put that back in there. Modeling paste isn't totally cooperating. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna leave it there. I'm gonna let it dry. So we're gonna let this dry completely. It's gonna take a few hours uh, to maybe overnight, depending on your environment. I find that I live in a fairly dry climate. It shouldn't be too, too bad, but in some other climates, it may be a little bit more difficult to have this dry quickly. So take your time, let it sit, make sure it is fully set before you move on to the next step. So now this is fully dry, then the next thing we want to do is start coloring our focal images with the Pan Pastels. So I actually bought some new soft art sponges today, and these ones are a few different shapes. So I'm going to start using some of these more triangular ones. There's uh, several different ways you can do this. It also depends on the look you're looking for. You can either do it very soft and loose where you don't stay within the edges. The other option is that you get every precise little spot on these. And so this is where you, in places you may want to use these very small detail tools or you might want to use a bigger foam depending on what kind of look you're going for. And one thing that I have learned as I've been working with this, you just add a little bit of your color on and you just rub it on like this. One thing I've learned is that you need to start with your light colors and go dark. I learned this the hard way when I was working on a few projects before. It's a little bit different than working with paint where you can lighten up as you go where you start with your mid tones, add some light colors on top and add some dark colors underneath. In this case you do need to start a little bit with the lighter colors just because it is a lot harder to lighten than it is to remove color. So one thing to realize with the modeling paste, it is fairly rough. So you can even see here that I've already started causing a little bit of roughness to my sponge. So the options are you go very, very light with it or you find a sponge that has been used a bit more and you don't mind having a bit more wear on it. And in this case, I'm going to try to keep the edges light and then the inner part of it a bit darker. But this is also where if you're not as picky about how particular you are with things, this is where you can take a sponge more like this and very loosely not necessarily stay within the lines. Like there you can see I've gone a little bit out, outside the lines, but maybe caring a little bit less about your final outcome and just having a softer look to it. It kind of depends if you want more of an impressionistic feel to this or if you want a little bit more detailed graphical feel to your final product. Now I'm going on with a slightly darker yellow. And this is where you can get start getting some fun mixes in here. And I think if I were to do this again, I might use like fiber paste or a, a more maybe a slightly softer paste. What I'm noticing about this is it is causing a little bit of damage to my sponge. It is actually fairly hard medium, the modeling paste. And I think because of that, I'm running into a bit more issues with it not being very kind to my sponges. So something to think about again when you're working on on your pieces is when depending on what medium you want to use. Trying a few different ones and figuring out which ones maybe work best for what you're doing. Like this one works actually really really well with paint and I've used modeling paste a lot with paint. But I'm realizing with these pan pastels I might have maybe I should have moved to a slightly gentler medium because you can see here it's actually already kind of started to to dig in to the sponge a little bit and the next thing you can do is in this case I'm going to add a little bit of red and this is where using one of these tools can be really great because you can just do a little bit of an edge if you want I'm actually quite surprised at how much this 
modeling paste is tearing up my sponges. I was not really aware of that when I used this. I used a different type of paste. I always do a demo just to try out ideas before I, I video for you guys. And and I have to say I was using, uh, a, I think I was just using just regular light paste over using modeling paste. And I have to say it was a little bit more gentle on my, my sponges than this is. So uh, I would say something like fiber paste is also a really good choice. You don't necessarily have to go completely crazy putting on on medium like this. And again, if you find that's a little harsh some of those lines, again come back in with a little bit of that that deeper yellow and bring it back. This is the nice thing about these being as blendable as they are. You can add more color, add less color, soften, bring back. So there we go. That's our first our first flower on the inside I think I'm actually going to use my burnt sienna and I always try to get some contrast going so I know better I actually went in a circular motion and again just pull across because what you have here now is all these loose little bits that you really don't want to leave loose so it's been a while since I've spent a lot of time using these pastels so I'm, I'm getting into some of my paint practices over how are you supposed to work with pastels to get a really good finish? So do what I say, not as I do. <laughs> and you will generally get a better result. In this case, I'm tapping as well as kind of rubbing because I don't really want to destroy my sponge now that I know this is a really rough medium for this. And I'm adding in a little bit of black because I noticed that mostly sunflowers have like these deep spots in in the center because really sunflower seeds are not really a light brown they're more of a, a black color so yeah because I don't want to make this completely black I kind of want to throw in some some edges and some highlights and have more than one color kind of coming through with this because I like a little bit of the yellow I'm gonna put that in there as well which also complements the brown. So now I'm going to move on to the next one. I, the next one I'm going to do a little bit deeper in color. So I'm actually going to start with the more orange. And in this case, because I'm getting into the rough parts of it, I'm just going to come in with the red. And because I am getting close to where the other one is, I don't really want to have them completely meld. I kind of want to show that there are variation between these two. And if you know you're going to be using something like this, this is also where it would not be a bad idea to use a sponge that you are not attached to or you've already used a lot because then at that point it doesn't matter if you maybe end up with it being a bit damaged from the roughness of the media. But again, by just using a, a softer media or something that's not going to grab nearly as much, uh, this modeling paste, it's great because you can get really great texture and height from it. I actually use it for for building up areas in my mixed media work and for having it to have a lot of contrast but you can see that the beauty of its strength is also a bit of a downside when you're using pastels because again it, it does do a little bit of damage to your <laughs> to your uh, sponges and I don't think these sponges were really meant for quite the use I put them through so I don't think it's a lack of quality I think it comes down to what I choose to do with it and I do end up abusing things a bit when you do mixed media with them Come back in and blend a little bit there between the two colors. I'm going to start this one a little bit different. Instead of starting with burnt sienna, I'm going to start with it being quite bright. And then I'm going to see what other colors I want to add in from there. I 
And now for the last one, I think I'm going to stick more to the... I think it's a little differently. I think I'm going to add orange to the outside and go lighter on the inside. And I did exactly what I said not to do. I'm sorry, that's dark and going light. But, you know, we'll give this a try and see how it does. It sometimes can work. I think it just depends on, on how you can try to make it work with the colors that you have. I think the key is not going with too much of the pastel so that you can actually have it kind of come through well. What's really nice about these pastels is if you're not a fan of painting and you like the watercolor effect but you don't necessarily want the practice that maybe that you need to put in to try to become better at watercolor, like I'm still learning to practice to get better at watercolor. What's nice about this medium is it's a, because it's dry and it is a little bit easier to control, like it has a very soft look so there's, in a sense it's not super easy to control but it's easier to control than something like watercolor so if you want a really nice soft look and, and that kind of feel but you don't want to necessarily have to go to all the, all the effort of practicing watercolor, this, this kind of gives you that effect without having to go through through too much effort. So I think when you're starting into learning some of these mediums and they feel a little bit hard and a little bit daunting, having something like pastels can be really helpful for being able to get the color down quickly to start gaining some confidence before maybe moving into painting work itself. Again, a little bit more of that burnt sienna on the inside here. I like mixing colors a lot. I Maybe it comes from all the time I've spent painting. You realize you get much better colors and much more variety when you have a variation in color. So now that you've had this color, the next thing you want to do is add another layer of workable fixative so that you seal in this color. So once you've let your color set by adding the workable fixative, the next thing you want to do is add your phrase. In my case, I took my new die cutting machine and cut out new beginnings that I basically created uh, using a program to basically weld all the letters together so I wouldn't have to put them down one by one. And I intend to do this with quite a light blue paper because I do want it to be seen, but I want it to actually kind of fall into the background a little bit. And so I'm just going to use a little bit of PPA glue and attach this to my layout. So what I thought about New Beginnings is with everything that's been happening in the last year, I know a lot of comments I saw online has been, oh, thank goodness the year's over and thank goodness for 2021. And I think there's something to be said about being able to have that fresh start. That being said, I do believe there is value in looking back and seeing what has been and seeing what we have learned from the time that we've had during this pandemic. I know for many of us it hasn't been easy, but I definitely feel like there has been some lessons I've learned, things that I am now way more thankful for than I ever used to be. Like the idea of being able to go to a coffee shop and have a cup of coffee with a friend, something I used to take advantage of. And now I think about it and go, wow, that's just an amazing opportunity to be able to have that kind of freedom to be able to just go and not have to worry about getting anyone sick or having any sort of issues. And so I really like the idea of, of new beginnings. And, and my hope is that this year, as they have the vaccine and everything figured out, that we'll be able to move towards a, a new normal and hopefully more of an old normal in the midst of everything. And I'm going to add in my little eyes as well. I've only, I With the cursive, I do want to make sure that you can actually see that there is an eye shape in there as well. And I feel like the key to having a good year is by doing some planning. I actually don't believe in New Year's resolutions, but I do believe very strongly in having a good plan. I am actually using a new planner this year. I used a creation of my own planner last year and I'm finding it's working and not working so I'm going to try a more uh, regular planner for the coming year and see how it works and then I may go back to developing my own again. But that being said, I did do actually some SMART goals uh, printables as well as a habit tracker that I do have on my website if you're interested in it, and I will link to those below. But I think it's really important that we have goals, that we find ways to get to where we want to be. And to add a little bit of interest to my sentiment here, I'm actually going to be using one of these Pentel Milky Pop pens just to do a little bit of outlining on here, just to help it stick out a little bit more. And 
And you might notice that along here, I actually added a little bit more pastel. I ended up choosing to let it be a bit more loose than I originally planned on. And, and some of that comes down to style. I really wanted something that was quite loose in effect to give it a more of a watercolor look over a more graphical look. And again, this comes down to personal preference as well. If you like everything between the lines, stay within the lines. And if you like things a little bit looser, do something like I've done here. So as you can see, I've now outlined my new beginnings. It pops a little bit more, but it's still very subtle. The whole point of it was for it to fall to the background a little bit. My intention is to actually add my goals for the year on this page. Just some of the high level goals that I have. I do follow my goals in my day timer, but I thought by actually having them on my page, on a page that I will review throughout the year, it's another extra reminder of those goals. Because again, they say if you don't have your goals on hand, you're not going to remember them, nor will you follow through on them. So and again, another thing just to make sure that you can work on your goal setting throughout the year, a chance to look at the new year in a positive light and hopefully move on and be able to have a really great 2021. I hope that you have a really great New Year's Day. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, if you could like it, subscribe to my channel, and maybe provide a comment below about what you've liked about this video. As well, I have my website, hopalongstudio.com, where I have other creative ideas on how you can have creative self-care in your personal life. I hope you have a really great week, and I will see you next time.